Let's see if I can get this intro out. <laughs> so far, I've had to restart several times. I don't know. Okay, slight change of plan on the kitchen table. I'll just have to fill you in. <laughs> Hopefully, I can get my tongue working again. But, uh, yeah, this whole area, new plan. Howdy, howdy, this is Claire Lawrence. All right, so this is my kitchen table. And the original plan was to do a collab with Rhonda. Okay, so my tongue is really not working well. <laughs> and I'm just not gonna restart this again. We're just gonna go with it because sometimes you just gotta power through. Okay, Rhonda Draculis from RK3 Designs. There we go, got it out. Okay, she was gonna do a collab with me and we ended up doing a spontaneous project where we worked on my coffee table together, which led to this design being open to just me finishing up the entire piece. And I don't mind doing that and that's cool. Um, it's not like it was her idea, it was just a spontaneous thing. So we just went with it and so what happened was this got put on the back burner a little bit because I had designed this up with her colors that she usually plays with in mind, meaning she loves messing with the turquoises and the um, stone colors and such. I got a lot of shadows coming in. This is getting towards the evening here, <laughs> getting some casting shadows. Um, any rate, so I wanted to incorporate some of those colors in here so that when she worked in this area, everything would be cohesive and work well together. However, since she's not going to be doing this part of it, and I'm going to be finishing this part, I needed to chew on it a little bit and figure out how I wanted to work this area and this area together. And I think I'm going to go ahead and continue with the mosaics. However... I'm going to leave a little bit of this to be a surprise, and you guys are just going to see how it unfolds. Um, but I'm going to continue working with some of these color tiles and just bring them on through. You'll see, you'll see some lines in the background. However, what you don't know is what's going to be happening in between. So that's going to be a little bit different, and it was completely like a last-minute thought because I'm also keeping in mind that this is going to my kitchen area. And so I have elements in my kitchen that I kind of want to help tie things together and such. So I put those elements in mind with the background area here. So we're just going to get busy because I got a lot of work to do still left on this piece. All right. Let's see. Put some videos on my, my favorite art buddies and such and get that rolling in the background and I'm gonna time lapse quite a bit of this. I'm gonna probably break this down into two videos into parts and then I'm gonna probably put together all three of the videos together in one chunk, run one continuous chunk. So that way um anybody who wants to see the breakdown of it a little bit more because it's gonna be so long as far as the process can can see the, the parts. In other words like this video of course will be a segment. Um, hopefully that made sense. Okay. Got to get to work.
So I've been busy cutting up little slabs or little tiles of wood. There's some pretty wood that I got from the burl hunter. And to these little tiles here that I'm using on the table. I'd show you cutting, but it's just me and I really don't want, I want to be as safe as possible. But I've got a jig set up for the thickness just so I can be consistent and cutting away one slice at a time. So talk you through a little bit about what I'm doing here. Uh, I have laid out different types of woods here where I have gone ahead and pre-sliced them up into kind of tile size pieces. They're all approximately the same. It doesn't have to be identically the same. It's just as long as it's not really much thicker than this is. So I think that's one of the higher points on the tile table. And as you can see, I got a variety of different sizes as far as widths wise. Um, you know, these are more of the, the squares, the skinny rectangles, and then longer rectangular kind of things. But what I've also done is I have sanded these down to about 220 and put on a layer of polyacrylic to help seal the wood a bit. And that's to just keep it from bubbling out and such. I did do a test and did some with, like I got two pieces of wood, um, one of the spotted wood as well as one of the walnuts and put a super, super thin coat of resin on it. And that would have worked out fine for this guy, but for the walnut, it got super dark, almost black. And I didn't want that to happen. Meaning the first coat really absorbs into the wood big time. It acts like a sponge and it just soaks it up. So I want the resin to make the wood grain shine and really come to life, but I didn't want it to darken up so much that it just, it turns black. So that's why I ended up going with a polyacrylic in this particular case. But um, yeah, I got a bunch of uh, wood here from uh, uh, the Girl Hunter guy up in Oregon. Gorgeous wood. And this ought to add a nice addition to the table. And as you can see, I've got some bits of uh, resin tile running through it. And I'm kind of working this out as I go along. I might add a lot more resin tiles and such like that. But I just wanted to talk about the wood here for a little bit. All right, better get to work.